So in this section of the course, we're going to talk about something called working capital. Working capital. So that's the current funds, the current capital that the company has deployed and available to run its day-to-day -day operations. And working capital consists of the current stuff. So working capital is current capital deployed, money and funds that the company uses to help pay and cover day-to-day -day operations. You have to meet payroll, got to meet rent, there's current obligations that you have to meet. And the components that make up working capital are the current assets, cash, accounts receivable, inventory, you may have prepaid items. Any current assets are part of working capital, less current liabilities, accounts payable, notes payable, would be the net working capital, the residual capital that you have left over that you can work with to cover all the anticipated needs of the operations. And if you have a surplus balance in working capital, we can apply that to making long-term investments. So there are a lot of challenges to managing working capital. So if we take that, if we break down all the components, cash, well, you have to have certain practices in place to manage cash. You gotta make sure your cash have sufficient cash on hand to pay your debts, your current debts, your bills, your invoices, your payroll. Accounts receivable has some unique things that we have to do to manage receivables. We'll talk about that in another lesson in this section. And then one of the big things that we have to get our arms around is if we're a retail business, we have inventory, then we have to manage inventory. So there are some specific challenges to managing each of the specific components of working capital, like cash, receivables, inventories. And each of the lessons that makes up this section will deal with those specific components. Right now, we just want to get the high-level overview and understand that working capital is the current capital that we have available to cover our current operations. And with that comes a lot of challenges. Managing cash, receivables, inventory, how much do we have working capital? How much should we have on hand and keep to cover our current obligations? Then if you have some surplus working capital, can we apply that to make long-term investments in the business? Here's a key point, a real key point I think you need to understand and take away from this. Working capital, the current capital that's deployed by the company, the current assets, those components do not generate any real return to the business. It's the long-term investments that generate returns for a business. Long-term investments, new systems, marketing program, research and development program to develop new products. Those kinds of long-term investments, that's where you're going to get your growth from in the company. You're not going to get any real return or any real, you're not going to get anything by this working capital. So what the challenge is, you want to hold a minimum level of working capital and try to kind of pull some of this working capital and divert it into long-term investments. That's a big challenge because at the same time you've got this risk. Well, i got to have enough working capital to cover my current obligations. So there's a real big challenge in how we manage this working capital. The first component, for example, is cash. So if we just start with that first component of working capital, we want to hold a minimum level of cash because, think about it, money sitting in your checkbook is not going to generate any return, right? But if you have a lot more money, if you have some surplus money sitting in your checking account, you say, oh, gee whiz, I can take that and maybe invest it in some type of fund where I can get a return. So that, that challenge with cash transcends the challenge of working capital. No return with working capital, so we want to divert it to long-term investments, just like your checking account. Now, as a rule of thumb, as a absolute minimum, within a business, if you have bank loans and there are compensating balance requirements, which says basically the bank says, look, we'll lend you this money, but when we look over your balance sheet, 
we're a little bit concerned about your liquidity. So as a condition of this loan, you have to hold and keep a certain minimum balance in your checking account. That's called a compensating balance. So the minimum level of cash that you have to keep on hand in a business is a function of your compensating balance. And then not only do you have a compensating balance that may be tied to a bank loan, but let's say you don't have a bank loan. Then as a minimum, the amount of cash you want to have on hand is the fact that you could have uncertain events pop up. Plus, obviously, you have to have enough cash to cover your recurring expenses. So if you look back in history, you should know from your previous disbursements out of your checking account, well, I got to pay rent every month of this month. I got to meet payroll. These are the recurring normal month to month expenses that I got to disperse out of my checking account. So you got to cover your transaction balances that you anticipate plus anything that you consider uncertain. So you have to have a certain minimum level of cash and it should be the greater of the compensating balances that the bank requires or that precautionary balance plus the transaction balance requirements for your cash account. So we're going to go through several lessons that go into formulas to help us figure out how much cash should I hold. We'll go through receivables, inventory we'll spend considerable time on. And at the very end, we're going to talk about minimum levels of working capital. So this kind of sets the stage for the entire section. We want to get a good handle on managing working capital. That's the real thing that we want to get out of this particular section of the course.